All right, let's take a look at this really cool retro handheld console, Atari, that was done by Blaze Retro. You can look this up over at blazeretro.com. They make some other things too, like Atari joysticks and mugs and t-shirts, things like this. It's a UK-based company. This was mainly sold in the UK, but you can get it here in the States as well, like off of Amazon.com. Uh, that's where my wife got this for me uh, for Christmas. She ordered it for Amazon. Gave it to me for Christmas. I thought it was pretty cool. Anyway, pretty cool box. It's nice and sturdy. Shows a nice picture of the console itself. It has a nice little wood green thing going on. It's got the little vent things from the original 2600. It's kind of themed. Pretty cool. And of course, on the back it lists what games it has. It comes preloaded with 50 games. Pretty awesome. So now let's open up the box. It slides open to reveal the console inside. Pretty cool. It's pretty neat looking. Got our D-pad here. Got two action buttons. Then on the top we have our on and off. We have a headphone jack. We have the AV out to put it out to a TV. Kind of cool. Then we have our volume control. And then on the back we have our battery compartment. So it looks like it takes four AAA maybe? It's like AAA size. Four AAA batteries it looks like. Pretty neat. The plastic case feels kind of nice. Pretty cool. You may notice that it doesn't have an SD card slot on it like the At Games does. So you're pretty much limited to the 50 games that are on this device. You got a nice little screen protector here. We'll peel that off so we can check out the games. Pretty awesome. Also in the box, we have... Oh, get out of there. Oh, it's stuck. There we go. Powered by Blaze! Da -da. And here's some of the other stuff they make I talked about. So they got the Atari Vault joystick for your PC. That's kind of cool. Then we have a plug-and-play joystick. Of course, here's the portable, and the t-shirts they make, and the posters, and the cool mugs. Well, that makes some pretty cool stuff. That's awesome. Then we have this real simple instruction manual here. It's one page. Basically, this shows you how to put the batteries in, how to turn the machine on and off. That's pretty much it. <laughs> I like the case. This came in. It's, it's really nice. Should protect it really well. Okay. Let's put some batteries in this bad boy and give it a try. Oh, here's our select button there and our start button. Pretty awesome. Okay, here we go. We got it all booted up. We have like 10 pages of games. There's five games per page, so it gives us a total of 50 games. That's pretty cool. Venture, Air Sea Battle, Asteroids, awesome. Oh, Casino, Candy Bomber. Oh, cool. Ah, oh, Demons to Diamonds. That's a fun game, but it's a paddle game. Why do they put paddle games on these things beyond me without a dial? They need to have a dial on these little things for paddle games. Oh, well. Oh, yeah, look, Circus Atari. Another fun paddle game. It's impossible to play with a D-pad. Double Duck. Cool, cool. Haunted House. That was awesome. You can't evolve on the Video Olymp Quadrun. That's good. Oh, Stellar Track. I like that. Oh, Submarine Commander. That's another good one. What else we got? Oh, Sword Quest. Need the manuals for those. Yeah. Oh, Video Pinball. Well, let's go back and fire up Asteroids and see what it sounds like and looks like. So here we go. Atari! Well, it sounds a little tinny. Gameplay is really nice with oh, with the controls and everything. That's pretty cool. It's not bad. Whoa! Oh, you missed me. All right, let's try another game out. Now you notice I, I can't. I have to in order to reset it. I gotta turn it off and turn it back on again. That's how you reset it. Unfortunately, be nice to have the reset button on here. So it looks like at a paddle game. You can see the fun you have trying to play a paddle game. 
We'll put breakout in there. So here we go. Hit start. Now, you hit the D-pad, it throws that crazy paddle all over the place. You just don't have any fine control unless you rapidly press the D-pad. You kind of make little small movements. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, I'm doing fairly decent doing that rapid pulse thing on my D-pad. I've been thinking about maybe hacking one of these. I'll put like a little dial on there and put a little uh, rotary switch that'll pulse the D-pad right and left to see if I can make a little dial input for these things. But anyway, that's something else. So, let's plug this thing into a TV and see what it looks like. All right, here it is, booted up on the TV. Not too bad of a picture. Looks fairly decent for uh, being a composite output. So we can select again. Let's go, ahead and go back to Asteroids again. Whoop, past it. Asteroids, there we go. Let's see what it looks like here. Like, do you want a tar ink? Oh. Yeah, you see there's a little bit of junk on the screen there. It's not, it's not bad, though. Well, it sounds fairly decent on the TV. Whoa! You can see some kind of... See that really light snow-like effect? Huh. Kind of, kind of weird why it does that, but it does sound pretty good on the TV though. Not bad at all. It's pretty awesome. Let's reboot this thing. Atari. Let's break up adventure. Adventure. Game number one. Oh yeah, I spent hours playing this game. <laughs> pretty cool, pretty cool. All right, well, let's give some final thoughts on this little device. Overall, it's a really cool little handheld portable Atari. Uh, it only has 50 games. And that's pretty much what you're limited to since there's no SD card slot on here. The sound is a little bit off. It sounds a little tinny. And it doesn't really sound all that great. Uh, compared to the Atari Flashback Portal, which I absolutely love that thing. I was doing a quick comparison here. Let's look at Asteroids again. I'll fire up the game here real quick. And listen to it. Okay, so let's compare that to the At Games flashback version of Asteroids. You can hear a difference right away. Got more of a bass. This sounds a lot more like what I remember playing on my original Atari 2600 than on that Blaze console. So that's another difference between the two Atari portable handhelds. But for what it is, it's kind of cool. You know, I like how they got the wood grain design to simulate the Atari 2600 in this pleated plastic. Looks like the cover of an Atari 2600. Got the little ring around the fire buttons. Got two fire buttons on here. Uh, there's some games that require a second input. That's what this one's for. D-pad feels pretty good. It is responsive. I just wish it had an SD card slot on there. Maybe a little bit of a speaker. But you can also tell the screen is a little bit smaller than the newest Atari Flashback Portable as well. 
It's not a really big deal. It's very minor, but it is a difference between the two. Now, if I had a choice between this and the Flashback Portable, I would probably pick the Flashback Portable. There's a lot more stuff you can do with it, but this is still kind of cool to have in the collection. Plus, it was a Christmas gift, so that's pretty awesome, too. Anyway, that's the Atari Retro Handheld from Blaze. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.